Uh, Desiree asked a question offline, uh, emailed it to me about a quick thing I rattled off when we were doing speed round. I rattled it off fast because it was the speed round and is an easy way to understand at least the biggest bulk of the federal budget. Every time you hear somebody bloviate about shrinking the federal budget and what they're talking about is, uh, oh, we should shrink foreign aid or Foo, oh, we got to cut SNAP. We now know that Donald Trump has proposed new new rules that are going to hurt poor people and take people off their benefits. Uh, and each time there is this bloviation, they're talking about we got we got to shrink the government. We got to make government smaller. Let's talk about actually what the government spends on. The, give or take three quarters varies between seven to eighty percent. Give or take ballpark three quarters. The federal budget goes the following five things. If you're not talking about these five things. You're not really talking about impacting the size of the federal budget. And these are the things, by the way, not only these things are popular, but it also bears on the question of whether Donald Trump will, in fact, go after Medicare, Medicaid and Social Security, as he said he would not in 2016, but has already put out plans that do. He also said he wouldn't go after Medicare, Social Security during his State of the Union address. And I think we know that that could be the 16,000th and first lie to pile atop the stack. But in response to Desiree, here are the five things. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, service on the national debt, and the U.S. military. I'll say them again for fun. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, service on the national debt, and the U.S. military. For discretionary spending, those, some of those things are locked in. They call them entitlements. They're entitled in the budget. The, uh, for discretionary spending, military spending is a little over half of that. So if you're not dealing with those things, you're not really impacting the federal budget. And the, and the tricky deal is, the challenge that Republicans have had over the last 40 years is that they say lower taxes, lower taxes, but they don't really want to suffer the political costs. They would like to do it if they could avoid the political costs. So they're trying to do it slowly to throw people off Social Security, privatize Social Security. They've certainly tried to do that. Uh, slash Medicare instead of expanding Medicare to more people or to everybody. Uh, they are working to cut and have cut Medicaid because, you know, that's clearly just poor people and not older people, which include maybe some donors. So that's just a handy thing to keep in mind that the cha and one of the challenges to just finish that point that they faced is that when they run on, when they run on uh, slashing the budget, or when they run on shrinking government, or they run on lower taxes, the way to pay off the lower taxes is just a deficit spend. To cry about national debt if a Democrat is in office, but when they're in office, cut taxes for people in the upper income levels, and then do that just by jacking up the national debt. It was the same th thing under Reagan. It was the same thing under Bush. And it was the same thing under Trump. It's a standard move. And there are some. I mean, there, don't, be, don't get me wrong. There are true ideologues within the Republican apparatus who would like to slash Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. It's just been tricky to get all the votes in Congress to do it when members of Congress have to stand for re-election. But anyway, that list, Desiree, is a handy list to remember. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Service and National Debt, U.S. Military. Also want to respond to, Rob, you asked me, do I think that the Iowa, uh, Iowa caucus was rigged? I don't know. Uh, what I've been just saying is I want to rely on a paper record. It is a reminder that I want a paper record in every election. Uh, I am grateful to live in a state that has vote by mail. I don't think vote by mail is all of the answer, but I think you add vote by mail to automatic voter registration, to good election monitoring, to uh, a good system of democracy. And having that paper record gives me some... Um, you know, could you still rig an election? Sure, in some respects. But if you have that paper record, it makes it harder. 